The iPad OS 26 developer beta has been out for a little over a month now and it's brought a whole host of new features for work and productivity. I've been using it daily on my iPad Pro in my office job and I have to say it's made my iPad work a lot more like a Mac. But for all the amazing features that iPad OS 26 offers, there are still those little annoying things that make an iPad difficult to replace your computer and work on it full time in the office. Hey everyone, Tech Dad here and I was super excited when the iPad OS 26 beta dropped. I thought the new features looked great and I've been using my iPad Pro for over a year as my only computer. So I was really looking forward to putting these new features to work in my job. It had so many promises for making the iPad better in the workplace when it came to window management, multitasking, file management, and all the other things you care about when you're trying to do your nine to five job. So for the past month, I've been testing out all those new features, including the menu bar, the new windowing system, and even the new liquid glass look and the translation lucent look for your apps and widgets. And while I'm really impressed for the most part, a month of testing has left me a little bit frustrated. I'm still a little frustrated by the browser experience. I'm still frustrated by the menu bar half working and half not working. I'm frustrated by the preview app being a little buggy and a little wonky. And I'm frustrated by the things that Apple never fixed. For example, not being able to share your screen of the secondary display. That's a little bit frustrating since you've been able to connect to a secondary display for about three years now when they release Stage Manager, I would have thought they would have figured that out after three years. Which demonstrates that if you're going to use your iPad as your only computer, you're still going to make compromises in exchange for that tablet functionality and form factor. So in this video, I want to give you a full breakdown on my experience on using iPad OS 26 on my iPad Pro for the last month. I want to talk about the things that are great with this new operating system, and then I want to talk about the things that are still holding the iPad back from giving it a top-notch experience for work and productivity. All right, let's get into it. Oh, and by the way, this is not my normal recording area. If you've been watching my content a while, you've been noticing I've been jumping around. Well, I've been on vacation for a little bit and I'm also in the process of moving. I'll be moving next week, so you'll see me in my new space soon. Okay, so first let's talk about that menu bar, which was a great new addition in iPad OS 26. It's very similar to what you would use on a Mac and just gives you a whole host of new options and controls that are quickly accessible and at your fingertips. And as long as you're using the Apple apps, I think it works great. The copy paste works great. I like using the menu bar to open new windows. That's quick and easy, especially when you're using the files app or Safari. Where it starts to break down is where you're using the third party app. So obviously this is a beta. It's not fleshed out yet. And third party apps probably haven't got a chance to program some things. And I'm hoping they get a chance to do that before the public beta launches. Because if you're trying to do this stuff at work, it's really frustrating when Outlook doesn't have those features and you need to use things like like Outlook and Microsoft Word and all those other third-party apps. So for example, I was building a flyer in Pages the other day for work and my supervisor sent an email saying she would like to add a specific sentence of text in the poster. So of course, I just wanted to copy and paste her text from the email into the poster in Pages. Well, when I use the menu bar to copy, that works fine. But when I select a paste and match style so that the fonts match and are appropriate and are the right size and all the things, doesn't work, it's just grayed out. So I have to use the old-fashioned function of going to share and then selecting copy and then selecting paste so that it pastes in match style. I mean if we got the menu bar I really want those things to work and I think they will when we get past the beta it might just take a few months for the third-party app developers to get a hold of it. However when stage manager launched sometimes it took years for things to get worked out so I'm hoping that Microsoft doesn't drag their feet on this. Sometimes Microsoft just doesn't really care if their stuff works right on the iPad and who could blame them I'm sure that's not really their top priority. Also, the menu bar seems to work clunky when you connect a secondary display. So when I use my Apple Studio display, of course it works fine because all Apple stuff plays well together. But at work, I've got this old HP monitor, and so when I hook into that, the menu bar doesn't even appear. Usually you can just move your cursor up to the top of the screen and it'll come down. Well, it doesn't do that on this HP monitor for whatever reason. And so I noticed that in the past with Stage Manager and iPad OS 18, some monitors just worked a little clunkier than others. So I hope they get that worked out in the future as well. All right, so next I want to talk about the mobile browsers. So obviously at work, you have to get all kinds of things done in the browser. You've got to work with Google Docs. We work with Smartsheet in my office, which is a full browser app. You got to have that working in the browser. Sometimes we work with the Microsoft apps in the browser, especially when we're collaborating. So you have to have a good functioning browser. And for the most part, the browser works okay. Sometimes you need to hit refresh when things are working clunky or not loading right, especially in Google Docs or Google Sheets. But it seems like the swipe to go back 
back feature has returned. I thought they got rid of that or fixed that, but no, when I'm in Smartsheet and I swipe to the left on my trackpad to move the sheet to the left, it just goes back and causes everything to reload and mess up, and that's super annoying. Also, buttons can be hard to reach in the browser, and you don't have this problem on a computer. For example, in PowerPoint within Safari, if you're trying to pull up the notes for the slide, the button is covered up by the little rail that you use to actually go back to the home screen. So sometimes you activate Siri by mistake or close the window by mistake when you're trying to click that. Or sometimes the little edit toolbar shows up and it's in the way of buttons. And so I'm really frustrated by that. I wish we could just get to the buttons we need to get to in the browser. Another example, and this is not work related, but gaming related. So when I go into D&D Beyond and I try to load the maps system, there should be a layout of specific buttons in the browser. And in Safari, it just doesn't load correctly and I can't scroll around correctly to get down to the buttons that I need to see. Now something interesting that I found out is that if I download Microsoft's Edge browser, then everything seems to load just fine. And so it's a lot like computers where you got to play around with the different browser versions. You got to see which browser works best for which web application. For the most part, Safari still works the best, especially for Smartsheet and Google Sheets. But I have had to jump over to Microsoft Edge for a few other applications. And Google Chrome on iPad is an absolute joke. It's terrible. Even for their Google apps. Don't use it. Okay, let's talk about that liquid glass feel and look. And so I do actually like the refreshed look of the liquid glass when you jump from app to app. Overall, it's pretty smooth. Still a little buggy, but I think they'll work the bugs out overall for liquid glass. When it comes to the translucent look of the apps, I'm not sure how I feel about it. Honestly, when they launched iPadOS 18 and they had the feature where you could change the colors of your apps, I liked dark mode, but I didn't really like it when you could tint all the apps to one color. I started to not be able to tell the apps apart. And so making your apps clear just takes that one step further where I really can't tell the apps apart because they're all see-through. Same for the widgets. I really can't tell those apart either. For example, the Microsoft widgets when you're dealing with Excel and Word. I like to have the recent document widget, but I can't really tell apart the widgets because there's no color to them. But if you add color, you can see one's clearly green, that's Excel, one's blue, that's Word. That just makes it so much easier when there's color. So while it looks cool and creates a neat looking home screen, I'm not sure it's all that useful. Okay, next we can talk about the new windowing system, which is hands down my favorite part of the new iPad OS 26 features. You can control windows so much better now. It's much snappier, easier to put them in the positions that you want. You've got touch gestures to move them, or you've got the handy dandy little buttons in the top left corner where you've got the red, yellow, and green. And you can minimize or close or full screen those apps very quickly. And you can also press and hold and move them around in a lot of different ways. Now you can have unlimited windows open, which I really love, especially when you're dealing with like the Files app or Safari. A lot of times it's just handy to have lots and lots of those windows open. Now there are some people that are really unhappy because they removed the old windowing system such as Slide Over. That's gone now. And I have a video about that which explains that. And for me, I never really used that feature a whole lot, but I guess a lot of folks really did and now it's gone. So we'll see if Apple brings it back by the time they actually release the true iPad OS 26 in September, October timeframe. I think a lot of people are going to want that back. Okay, the last thing I want to talk about is the new filing system and I think they have added some great things here and it seems to work really well. So remember how I said I like colors to distinguish different things? Well, that's what they did for the files app. Now you can color code your files and make them the colors that you want and you can take it a step further and add symbols to them. So I've used this feature to really differentiate my files and tell them apart quickly and easily. That's a great idea. And you can take it a step further and add a file to the dock in the far right side and I have my downloads folder there and that is just great to quickly access those files. That's been a Mac feature for a while. I'm so glad they added that to iPad. So I'm really happy with how you can manage and organize your files. It's great, it's easy, and it just makes a lot of sense. I'm not sure if you have a whole lot of colors to choose from. I'd like to see it where you could actually get more colors added. I think right now there's like five or six. But the symboling system really helps make up for that. You can use a whole host of different symbols. They've got lots to choose from. All right, so that's kind of my breakdown after using iPad OS 26 for one month. I'm still looking forward to when they clean this beta up and release the public beta in July. I think you're going to see some bugs disappear and you're going to see some things get cleaned up that we want. I still think we're going to be a little bit hindered by the mobile browser and not being able to share that secondary display. That's just such a big deal at work. I really wish they could fix that in the coming months. Let me know if you've tried it out. Let me know any questions you might have about iPad OS 26. I'm going to continue to release more content on that for the various iPad models. That's all I got for you. If you like this sort of content, please like and subscribe and we'll see you next time.